so much is at stake in next month's election uh, that we all have been working very hard to make sure we win. We made a decision to win, to save our democracy, to save uh, free and fair elections, a peaceful transfer of power, the independence of the judiciary. But democracy is also a personal issue, the freedom of women to have control of their reproductive freedom, uh, the freedom of people to read books or LGBTQ, the freedom to, uh, for our children to be safe on the streets from gun violence and the rest. So people think of democracy as the Constitution, and it is, and that's at stake too, because they've said they might even terminate the Constitution. It's a, it's a global issue, that is to say it's a big issue, and it's also an individual kitchen table issue for America's working families. So for the character of our country, we must win this election. And yet polls show mm -hmm. Vice President Harris tied with former President Donald Trump. Given the consequences you've just outlined, why isn't the needle moving? We are not tr trusting in polls. We are uh, owning the ground. We are M, mobilizing, mobilizing, getting out every possible vote. That's what we do every day, putting one mobilization day in front of another. We're messaging in a way to, you can't run on empty, you have to mobilize around a, a vision, and that vision has to be unifying for our country. It has to be progressive and bold if you wish, but not menacing, but unifying. And we have to have the money to get that done. So the three M's and the small donors have been so important to that. So we're getting our job done to make sure we win the election, whatever the polls show. Actually, for as, as new as Kamala Harris is on the scene, she's doing very well to be tied with a former president of the United States. Male voters, including black and Latino men, appear to be supporting Trump, again, according to the polls, um, in wide margins in the seven swing states, with just three weeks left until the election. Can Harris win them over? This is going to be a gender gulf, because women understand what is at stake in this election. They, women have the most to lose in terms of, the, again, woman's right to choose is so fundamental as a personal issue and as an economic issue and as a respect issue. But it's also things like affordable child care, of, uh, family and medical leave paid. The vice president talked about the other day about home health care for caregivers who are sandwiched in between caring for their children and their seniors. Some of them are men, mostly they are women. I want to pivot slightly. In your memoir, you recount how your husband, Paul Pelosi, survived a life-threatening attack. The University of San Diego just released the results of a survey that they did of Southern California elected officials. Two-thirds of them reported being threatened or harassed. What's the solution here? When my husband was assaulted, in violating the sanctity of our home, in our own home, violently assaulting him, a centimeter from losing his life. The other side, the former president and his son and the governor, Republican governor of Virginia and uh, uh, Leon Musk and people like that thought that was really funny. They made a joke of it. When president was attacked in terms of the assassination attempts, we all sympathized with him. That has no place one side or the other. But when we are trying to attract so many new people to politics, especially women, but also people of color, just to have the beautiful diversity of America reflected at the table of decision making, we can't have them be afraid for the safety of their families, their children, or themselves. A majority of Americans say that they are troubled by political violence, about the possibility of political violence how worried are you? Well, I think it's something to be worried about. But I do think that as soon as we get through this election, and whoever wins, we will accept the results of the election. We have to have a unifying spirit in our country. We have to try to bring people together. I've served in the Congress where we've had 
great differences between Democrats and Republicans, but we never had any disrespect for the patriotism uh, or the honor of the other person. And we have to get back to a place like that. I think young people are impatient with all this and their involvement give me, gives me hope. I think the arts are a place that bring people together. We laugh together, we cry together, we're inspired together. We find common ground, which we never even thought we had. Speaker Pelosi, thank you so much for speaking with me today. My pleasure, thank you.